So in this video, I want to talk about a third wave treatment for sensory motor OCD, something which is called acceptance and commitment therapy, or ACT for short. Now, ACT is typically understood to be what we call a radical behavioral therapy. What that means is we kind of break everything that we do down into behavioral principles, and, and that could relate to obviously overt kinds of behaviors, things that we do um, that other people can see, but also the kind of behaviors that we engage in in our heads. So things like um, checking how we feel about things, or engaging in worry, or kind of ruminating on things that we've done. It would understand those things behaviorally, and that means that we can kind of look at what the function of those types of behaviors are in the context in which our problem is occurring. Now, the reason I'm talking a little bit about acceptance and commitment therapy for sensory motor OCD in particular is because there are certain tools in acceptance and commitment therapy that are really, um, really helpful in terms of enabling us to kind of not necessarily reappraise what it means to experience difficult physical sensations but certainly to change our relationship to those difficult physical sensations. Acceptance and commitment therapy works through developing what we call psychological flexibility. And psychological flexibility is underpinned through six different processes that are the targets for our therapeutic treatment. So we've got what we call diffusion, which is short for cognitive diffusion. And this is the basic idea there of starting to understand and treat our thoughts and mental processes as just thoughts and judgments and not necessarily being wholly representative of the, the world in front of us and our reality and our experience. So diffusion exercises in acceptance commitment therapy are enabling us to recognize that even though we might be having a particular thought, or even though we might be engaging in a certain type process about something, it is just more thought, it is just more thinking processes that we can actually get a little bit of distance from and see them for what they are. The acceptance process that we're trying to develop in ACT isn't necessarily that we are just accepting whatever it is that um, we, we see as being our problem. We're not just accepting that we've got a problem and we've just got to live with it. It more means the fact that we are kind of dialing up our preparedness to experience whatever it is that we are experiencing as we move in the service of the type of life that we truly want. So the next process that we're trying to develop an act is moment to moment awareness. And this can be done through the development and the use of mindfulness based activities. And the whole idea is there that if we are able to recognize when we are, our mind is not actually in the moment, we're able to recognize perhaps that we have fused with a certain thought or we're struggling with a difficult emotional state or, or physical feeling. We can kind of notice it and allow ourselves to bring ourselves back to that present moment. And again, to engage in, in the psychological flexibility and value-based behavior that we can talk about. The next process that we are trying to address and act is what we call self as text. And this is really, just developing an awareness of the fact that there is almost like this kind of pure awareness or pure consciousness aspect to our experience that is really stable, uh, long lasting, and has kind of been there through, through the whole of our kind of experience through all of our lives. That is slightly separate and different to how we identify with ourselves as we move through life. So, this part of the acceptance and commitment therapy work is just kind of loosening up this identification with a sense of self and recognizing that it's this kind of broader, more stable, conscious awareness that, that we've always got there, which, which just kind of, again, enables us to free up and, and develop some more of that psychological. The next bit that we talk about is what we call values-based living or values-based action. And, and really it is just about establishing that the, our values are intrinsic to us. Our values are the type of things that have been kind of, kind of navigating the path that we take in our lives. Now, our values are kind of ever-evolving 
but but generally reliable based upon the kind of things that make it feel certain. So if I relate values to, for instance, what I do in the domain of my career, one value for me is I really like value of freedom. So if I kind of notice there that that value is there for me, I am then free to navigate my behavior in the service of those values and using the rest of the psychological flexibility processes, use my values as the anchor for my behavior rather than kind of fusing with certain types of thoughts or trying to get rid of certain emotional or physical states to get the type of life that I tr really truly want. And this just links into the last bit of the acceptance of commitment therapy processes, and that is just committed action. And that is literally, um, am I able behaviorally to engage in the desired actions to move in a direction of my values, even though my mind might be wanting me to pay attention to this negative thought or to engage more in this behavioral um, you know, this kind of higher order strategy that I developed to deal with my distress, or, you know, rather than me just kind of focusing on, you know, I can't take the committed action until this feeling or this physical sensation is gone. So ACT works through developing psychological flexibility through each of those six processes. Let's consider how this relates to a problem like sensory motor OC. So when we talk a little bit about how we would apply this in clinical practice, the first thing we probably need to consider are the kind of things that are stopping us from moving in the direction of what we really want. Now, when we are talking there a little bit about the ways in which sensory motor OCD presents itself, first off, people will often be fused to certain types of thoughts about what their physical experiences mean. So they might be fused to certain types of thoughts. I'm not going to be able to go about my business today until this feeling is gone. They might be fused with certain thoughts about what their future is going to look like if this problem keeps happening for them moving forward. They might also be fused with certain kind of ideas about why they've still got this problem today, doing all of these other things. What we might say in ACT is that our fusion to those thoughts about the future, those fusion to those thoughts about the past, and what it means to have that sensation today are the kind of things that contribute to the maintenance of the problem with sensory motor OCD and the kind of things that keep us stuck and pull us away from both psychological flexibility and moving in the direction of life that we truly We will also consider the role of acceptance, openness, and willingness terms of how we relate to those physical and emotional aspects of our problem. So as we know, OCD, there are lots of difficult negative emotional states which emerge for people, often around the feeling of anxiety or fear, it could be relating to feelings of irritation by the fact that we still got this problem. It could be um, even sadness about the fact that, you know, we've been struggling for this with this problem for so long and we still don't be able to seem, seem to be able to get rid of it. So often what people will then do is they will think that the emotions that they are experiencing are the problem themselves. Okay? I'm not going to be able to move forward and get the type of life that I want until this feeling goes. And what that means is that at one level, we are treating the emotional experience as the problem. We are judging those emotional states as being problematic for us, which means that a lot of our kinds of strategies that we're using to deal with our problem directed to our internal world rather than moving in the type of direction that we want our life to go in. And whereas in the short term, in some contexts, it might be a useful strategy, the fact that people are, the fact that we will continually start to use this way of dealing with our emotional states as being a strategy to deal with our problem, and then it leads to ineffective, um, ineffective problem resolution means that this is not necessarily going to be a helpful way of us moving forward beyond our sensory motor OCD. Similarly with physical sensation. So, so let's just say in sensory motor OCD, my target that I think I need to resolve before I move in the direction of the type of life that I want is this sensation of blinking. The sensation of blinking is problematic for me because I'm infused with a thought that I need to get 
blinking right, otherwise I'm going to be stuck like this forever. Or something like that. What this means then is that I'm interpreting that physical sensation as something that is problematic, which then leads to the action. Now, if we were to target this in ACT, what we would be doing is saying, okay, we recognize that this is the story, these are the thoughts there that our mind wants us to think about this experience, this physical experience. We might also react to the anxiety and starting things to get rid of that feeling. But what we would do instead is we would use focused attention exercises, acceptance focused exercises, to see if it's possible to enable us to just get in direct contact with the physical sensation in and of itself. But what we would do, we would kind of say, okay, let's get close to it. Let's notice it. Let's explore the qualities inherent with that sensation. Let's notice where it is located. Let's notice if it is a big sensation. Let's notice if it's a warm or a cool sensation. Through this direct experiential work, we are testing out and developing this ability to see if it was possible just to be a little bit more open, willing, and prepared to experience the sensation just to And as we are doing this real quite a focused experiential way and exploring what it feels like to just get close to it, as a secondary effect, we might notice there maybe that some of that anxiety it doesn't matter if it doesn't because we're not seeking to get rid of the anxiety we expect it to go, but we're not going to get into a fight with whether it does or it doesn't. But we are kind of enabling ourselves to get close to and experience it and fundamentally change our relationship to the emotional, physical aspect of our sensory. Now, as we cultivate the fusion, as we cultivate openness, acceptance, etc., and we decide that those things there are not necessarily going to be conducive to moving us in that direction the type of life we want. We revisit values and we revisit committed that. If this problem has been such a focal point for our function for such a long time, as we develop psychological flexibility, the whole idea with it is that we're then able to broaden our behavioral responsive repertoire in, in response to those particular triggers. So even if we get a thought, we are kind of saying, okay, well, what is it that we can do that broadens our behavioral response, frees us up to move in the direction of the type of life that we truly want? And that's what we're doing there. We're enhancing this psychological flexibility. So then when there is a trigger, when there is something there that typically will get us to fixate on what we believe is a problem, we freed ourselves up to move in the direction of our body. It's also important to notice that in acceptance and commitment therapy, as opposed to other types of treatments for OCD, it's key, it's really important for us to say, even though we expect and imagine and want your distress to reduce, your symptoms to reduce, that at the outset is not treatment objective. At the outset, in act, the, the treatment objective is to increase functionality. That's what it's about. And the subtle reason for that is because if we were to say we want to get rid of your anxiety or we want to get rid of feelings, then again, we're feeding into this idea that, that it is the anxiety that is the problem fixed, or it's this physical sensation that is the problem fixed. And again, what that, that then means is that we will, at a subtle level, perhaps not wholly experience this, this emotional or physical state. It might mean that, again, we are kind of doing these exercises just so it goes, which means, again, we're not wholly open to experience the physical and emotional states which we believe to be our. So there's a real subtle nuance in terms of how we apply ACT compared to other OC. So there is an overview of ACT in terms of how I relate it to sensory motor OCD. And if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about it, I'm not going into masses of detail about that yet. Yeah, I'll follow this up with a more comprehensive video in terms of how to the parts of OCD. But if you're interested, um, of course, subscribe. Um, you can write some comments in the comment section below. You can get in touch with me at either of my two websites, which is www.accessivity.co.uk or 
if you're into the coaching side of things, purepositivepsychologycoaching.com. Look forward to meeting you there. Look out for more of these videos. Um, and thanks very much for watching.